What's up everybody? Uh, it's Saturday. We're going to work on a little fun project here that I've been waiting on doing. Uh, I purchased some trans tint dye off Amazon. Uh, I picked myself up some blue and some bright red. And I've been playing with it a little bit over the last week or so on some mixing and how to apply it for the best results. So I'm going to show you how I went about doing it and uh, hope you guys like it. All right, so to get started here, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this Transtent dye. Um, I picked it up on Amazon, like I said, and it comes in a two-ounce bottle. Is a, Well, it's the smallest one that they offer. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for both of these. Uh, they have quite a few colors. If you go to their website or even on Amazon, they show a bunch of the colors and, and what it looks like on wood. Um, but for this purpose, I just got the red bright red and the blue um, and I'm going to do some playing around with it and test it see what it, what works well uh, my first attempt that I had done a couple days ago well first off let's go over what the the mixing directions are for this thing uh, it says on here use a mix ratio of one ounce of dye per one quart of solvent so if you do the math for me just to mix up a small batch so I didn't use a whole lot this stuff isn't cheap so be wise with what you're doing. This stuff goes a long way too. So what I had done is I had done some math on uh, converting that down to a lower amount. And what I came up with was you need one ounce of water, denatured alcohol, or, or something that mixes well with this transtent dye. For the first case, I went with water. And it's a one ounce of water to one mil of dye the the premix liquid maybe different for other uh, dye makers if it comes in a dry formulation it might be a little bit different but for this purpose alone it was one ounce of water to one ounce or one milliliter of dye so I doubled the rate just so I had a little bit more to play with and I did it for both the red and the blue now this time in this video I'm gonna cover a second mix that I've done which is also indicated on the back of these bottles that you can mix it with water uh, or denatured alcohol but you can also do a 50-50 water and denatured alcohol so the point of it adding the alcohol to it it helps it flash faster so you get less running and and leaking across in the wood and it'll stay where you want it more so than just the water does so this formulation is going to be one ounce of water one ounce of denatured alcohol and two milliliters of dye and I did that for the red and the blue and I'm just using you know off the shelf denatured alcohol and then filtered water got to make sure it's clean don't use just tap water it has too much other impurities and things like that in it so my first attempt was just on a couple pieces of scrap pine okay the first one I've done was a non-raised grain test so I didn't pre-raise the grain on this piece of wood I just applied the dye right to it and then sanded it down so you can see here I got a little bit of modeling because it bled over with just having the water but the color looks really good I did sand this after it dried with 220 so we had a little bit of removal from the grain uh, in between the grain on the blue side which is more visible than it is on the red side I also have done a raised grain version where I sprayed it down with a little bit of water let it sit for a couple hours came back sanded off the roughness and the, the fuzziness on the top and then applied the dye two ounces of water two milliliters of dye for the red and the blue and then once it dried I sanded it back down I had a little bit more removal on this piece than I did the non raised grain which I don't know what that really tells you but this is pine so it may be different for different species but this could use another coat of this formulation to see if it would cover this up and then sand it back down again so those were the two that I'd started with and then I got to thinking I was working on another project that uh, I was using some oak and I had a cut off of it so I did it on there and sanded it down uh, 
I pre-raised the grain on this thinking that since it's a little thicker wood it might need a little help getting the, the tint in there or the dry, uh, dye in there. So I raised the grain, sanded it down to 220, applied it, let it dry, sanded it back down. We have a little bit of removal on the blue side. Granted this wasn't the smoothest board. It wasn't finished yet. I hadn't really sanded it down. It was just a cutoff. So that may have been just a high spot that rubbed off. But other than that, this looks really good on this oak. Doesn't have any finish on it yet, but I'm sure with some finish, it would really pop this grain out. You can tell a little bit on the red that it removes some off of, off of the grain. So this too, you could probably put another coat of the dye on if you wanted to and really darken that up. But I think it looks good if you're going for a weathered look. It, it beats paint, I can tell you that, because you can still see the grain through here, and it looks really amazing. I don't know how well you can see it in the camera, but I like the look of it. And then the third test was just a, a little fun deal that I did. It's on a piece of cheap plywood, three-quarter plywood. I cut a line just to try to keep the dye from getting into one another, which it, it did a pretty good job, actually. There's a little bit of modeling up here where it mixed, kind of like what it did on my two pieces of pine here, where it turned purple close to the line. Mainly because I'd never used this before, so I didn't know how it was going to react once it got into the grain. Even though I had a score line here, it still bled across. And I'd done the dye on the red side first and let it dry, and then I went ahead and did the blue. Well, the blue migrated into the red. So if you're doing this when it's touching, be extra careful when you creep up to that line that you have some way to keep it from going over or just do it in a couple extra coats of this dye and you might get a better result than what I did. But on the plywood, we'll go back to that. This, like I said, just cheap plywood. It worked excellent. I love the look of this. And it doesn't have any finish on it or anything yet, but it really popped the grain out of this stuff and it opens up some more possibilities for me for some other projects and I can get away with using some cheaper plywood and even using up some of the scraps for different things and the most fun thing that I've done a separate project that I had going I was scorching some pieces of pallet wood blackening the, the grain so it, it was leaving you know the, the yellow whitish color in between where it didn't burn which I thought was okay well what if we put some red dye in there and I did it with the blue also this looks amazing that red dye came right in and it didn't really color the black even though I'd sanded it down to get some of the charcoal off of there there's still a little bit left but this is pretty sweet looking and I also did it on the blue. The, the blue didn't come out near as well. It kind of came out green. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on the camera. But it, it did it come out a little green tint to it. it. It could probably use another coat of the blue. But pretty cool idea. So what I'm going to show you here is how I went about applying this dye. And in, in this case, we're not going to use the the water and dye mixture we're gonna go ahead and use this water denatured alcohol and dye mixture and see what it does okay so it's been a couple hours here let's see what kind of reaction we have with the the dye on this wood right now it looks pretty good um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the line with the alcohol and water I don't know how well you can see this out of the exception of this little spot here we really didn't have any bleed over with just a little score mark in the wood it's not very deep just with a marking knife um, I think it worked out pretty good the alcohol in this mixture was able to flash off a whole lot faster and remove a lot of the possibility of it bleeding like it did with just the water mixture so I'll show you that one here. So in comparison, we'll line up the line up the two lines. Same kind of line. They're both pine. It'll focus. 
You see all, all of this down in this groove here is where the blue settled. We had a big pool of it. So it didn't work out too well on just the water mixture, but with the water and alcohol, it worked pretty well. Now with just the red and just the blue, I like it a lot. It looks pretty, pretty smooth, uh, even color across there. We got a couple of blotchiness spots in here. Uh, of course, there's nail holes. This is pallet wood, so you're going to have that. Um, looks pretty good. The blue, there's a big blotchy area here where it didn't, it didn't uh, get as deep into the, the grain as I would have liked. But I'm going to add another coat to this. Uh, let's sand it off real quick and see what it looks like. Just sand it off with 220. It's a real light. Just take off the, the fuzziness if there is any. So we got a little bit of removal off of the high spots, which is kind of expected. Same way with the red. But if you want to go for a rustic look, I think that'd be the way to go. And we'll do it with both of them here. That's pretty smooth. So let's add another layer of dye to it and see what that does. Okay, we'll start with the red and just lightly mix this stuff up just make sure it's still in solution real well remember this is the alcohol water and the dye using the same rag as before sneak up on that line again And that's bringing that color really dark. Well, not really dark, but it's really rich, really vivid color. Like I was hoping for. And that wasn't very much added to it. Just a little bit. Just enough to get it into the rag. Okay, there's that red. Let's do the full piece here. And with the pores open just a little bit with the first application, this ought to take up a little bit more stain. Or dye or whatever you want to call it. But it shouldn't raise the grain again. It should be left with a smooth surface. Okay. Set that aside. Wipe it off my fingers okay and with the blue once again same rag that we were using before bit of bleed over into the red but I can live with it okay. 
and you probably can't see this on the camera but when I'm putting this on the combination of the wood soaking this stuff up and the alcohol flashing off quickly the layer I'm putting on this piece is is disappearing in a hurry it's going down into those fibers like we want it's creating a really dark hue and that's what I'm looking for is a nice rich rich dark color okay and I'll show you in comparison this is the one that I just sanded and I sanded this and reapplied so you can tell the difference that it makes when you reapply the second coat to it I'll focus on the area here that didn't take in as much dye we'll leave a pool of it right there for a second let it soak that in one thing to remember when you're doing this dye any kind of imperfect imperfections in your pieces like remember this is pallet wood so it's got a bunch of them but deep spots if you've got pits and whatnot in the surface that's where it's going to collect the dark color is going to collect and it's going to stand out a whole lot more so if you want a, a nice even color across your board you need to make sure that you have it as smooth as you possibly can to avoid having that dye sit and pool in, in low areas. But for a test, I'm not too concerned about it. It works out pretty well. So, reapplication on the second coat of blue and the second coat of red. The blue really lets that grain come through. The red does too, but the camera doesn't pick it up really well. So, in closing, uh, this is a excellent product. I believe it's going to work well for me. And I would suggest that you give it a try. Um, test out some colors. I mean, this is this is a better alternative, I think, than just using regular wood stains. And it even says on the bottles that you can you can mix to tone uh, different stains and, and give it a little bit of a hue to it. And it doesn't take very much. A couple drops can do a whole lot. And like I said, you know, you mix just two ounces of your solvent with two mils of dye and just what I did here there's a lot left over this stuff goes a long way so only mix up what you need but I'm gonna start using this product a whole lot and uh, like I said I I would suggest you guys give it a try it's not the cheapest stuff around but it works really well I believe um, if you guys have any questions or comments you know Put them in there in the in the comments section, and I'll leave links in the description to all the stuff that I'm using here, uh, the denatured alcohol, the trans tint, that kind of thing. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to try to answer them. Um, I appreciate you watching the video, and I hope you learned something from it. Uh, and we'll catch you next time.